Um, well, no, I will mention this because the reality of it is, but that's not going to be me. everyone, Brittany here from Just Be Crafty. If you're new here, welcome, and if not, thank you so much for coming back. In today's video, we're going to talk all about temperature blankets. If you watched last week's What I'm Working On episode, you'll know that I'm working on a temperature blanket. So today, I wanted to share with you all of the fun details. And this is by no means a new idea. Temperature blankets have been around for quite a while, but I feel like in the past few years, I've seen a resurgence in them with a lot more makers making them. Tony from TL Yarn Crafts makes one every year, as well as a bunch of of other designers and so I thought it would be fun to make my own and I thought maybe you guys would want to make one along with me. So I'm going to walk you through all the details of my temperature blanket and I think this is going to be fun. So this is my temperature blanket so far. Uh, you know we're only in January and I'm about a week behind. I think this was from my last row I did was the 20th. So just to get you caught up in case you never heard of a temperature blanket or you want a refresher, a temperature blanket is basically a year-long crochet project and each row represents one day. So I left off on January 20th. That was the last row that I completed and to help me with the project I made myself a little key where I put the year and of course I wrote the wrong year. I wrote 2021. I guess old habits die hard. I need to fix that. Um, and then I wrote down my hook size because in crochet projects if I don't write down my hook size I always always forget and that's so unfortunate. But I figured out the temperature ranges for my area. Um, I wrote, so it ranges from below 20 degrees to 100 plus, and I assigned a color to each of those temperature ranges. And then to help me remember, I just cut a little piece of each of the colors, and I of course laminated it because laminating's the best, and I hole punched it, and then I just attached the color to each. So this is just kind of my quick reference guide for when I find the temperature of the day and then I reference this when I am making my blanket. But I'll talk a little bit more about that later. Um, well, no, I will mention this. I actually made a fun little printout for this. This is just a download that I made and I'll go over this in more detail later. Um, but it kind of just goes over exactly like how to plan out your temperature blanket and it has some fun printables like the one I just showed you, the little key you can print off for yourself and also a daily temperature tracker. Uh, We'll go over this a little bit later. That'll be available for purchase in my Etsy shop. And then of course I put it in page protectors and put it into a binder just to make it more fun and also help keep me organized. You totally don't have to use something like this. You can just, all you need is a notebook to help keep you organized. And I'll show you how to use this as well as an as a notebook to keep you completely organized. So another idea that I thought would be really fun would be to make a temperature blanket for a year in the past. So I started one and I'm having so much fun with it. So this is actually based off of a year in the past, 40, 50, 60, 70? I don't know, many years in the past, many years in the past. So I'm actually basing the temperature blanket off of that year and it's really fun and I'm marking important dates on the blanket by using a contrast color. So of course each color is representing, you know, a different temperature. I'm basing all of my temperatures off of the daily high. So, you know, you have like a daily daily high, a daily low, and then the average. I'm basing mine off of the daily high. So those are of course the different colors. You might notice on here, let's get that to focus, that there are little contrasting spots on here with three little dots. So those are representing, um, those are just making those rows stand out a little bit and those just represent special dates to me. I want to say though that if you are planning to make a blanket based on the past you want to make sure that you can find that temperature data before you go out and you know buy your yarn and plan out your whole blanket because that would be really disappointing if you plan out your blanket and then you go to search online for the dates you know for the year you have in mind and you can't find anything. Um, I think typically you can probably find this data. Weather Underground is a really great place to find, at least for the US. I've had no problems finding anything. It can be a little bit buggy, so that's something to keep in mind. There's been times where I was looking up dates for even just this January, and you know, it'll be working, and then all of a sudden I'll look for a date and it'll say no data available. And 
you know, I know the data is available, but you know, I just closed out and then I tried again later and it was there. So just be aware of that. I was poking around in some major cities of Australia and in the UK and it looks like that data is available, but possibly you have a website that you know about. And I know that many of you are, you know, from all over. So just make sure you can find the data for the year in question. Um, but I thought that this was just kind of a fun twist on a temperature blanket. And I think that this would make a really, really great gift. Um, you could do this for, you know, in, you know, a wedding anniversary year, graduation anniversary year, birth year, just any special year and maybe yours or, you know, a friend or a family member's life. And then you can just highlight special dates with, you know, a little bit of a contrasting color. So it's just a, you know, a little fun twist on the classic temperature blanket. Let's talk about how to plan your temperature blanket. So step one is to figure out the year that you're doing. Are you going to do this year? Are you going to do a year in the past? Are you going to do multiple years? I don't know. Pick your year. So I'll have all of the steps on how to plan out your temperature blanket in my blog post. So you'll want to make sure you click on the link below to check that out. And you can find my step-by-step -step temperature blanket blueprint, say that three times fast, linked down below. That'll be available for purchase in my Etsy shop. So it's basically everything that you need just wrapped up into a printable PDF that you can make your own binder to and have that for you. And what's great is it's not just for this year. It's a resource and same with the blog post. It's a resource that you can come back to year after year to make your yearly temperature blanket as well as maybe any special anniversary blanket you want to make. So step two is all about your temperatures. You want to find the temperature range for the area that you live. Also find out where you're going to get your temperature data from. Like I said, I like to use Weather Underground, but there are many websites that you can look at. You know, maybe you just want to track it every single day in, you know, your weather.com app that you use on your phone or whatever. Just make sure you keep it consistent just to take the guesswork out of it and just make it a little bit easier on you. And I I personally like to use the daily high temperatures. You could of course use the daily low or the daily average. It, whatever you want to do, but I would just make sure that you keep it consistent throughout your blanket just to help your temperatures kind of like stay in a range and you're not using too many colors, but that's totally up to you. Next is figuring out your temperature ranges, which is super easy. All you have to do is open Google or your search engine of choice and just type in average monthly temperatures for your location. So for me, I live in Chapel Hill, North Carolina, so that's what I of course typed in. And then Google, I don't know about other search engines, Google like automatically populates. It'll like leave like the first, it'll list like the first few months and it'll say like the average high, low. And I think, I think it'll say like the high, low and average temperature of the day. Um, for the first, like the averages for each month. And I think like if you click on more, then it'll list all 12. And so it's just really great. For example, for mine, if I saw the average lowest temperature to be 12 degrees and maybe the average high temperature was 98 degrees, I would make my scale from like below 20 to maybe 100 plus. So, and then I would just kind of figure it out from there. I would do, so below 20, and then I would do like 20 to 29, and that would be blue. And then 30 to 39, I would assign that a green yarn. You know, whatever, however, however you want to do it, but that's basically how I did it. That is figuring out your temperatures. Next up is gathering your materials. So that's picking out your yarns, assigning a yarn to each, assigning a yarn to each temperature range, and then picking a color that you want to be your main color. So I am separating each of my months out uh, by doing two rows of a main color and I've picked white. So just to show you, I, you know, we're still in January for my 2022 temperature blanket, but in my temperature blanket that I'm doing for the past, I've already completed February. So you can see I've added a contrast row of white to separate out those months. So that's what I'm going to be doing for my current year temperature blanket as well. So I'm using white as my main color. You could use that. You don't have to. For my 2022 temperature blanket, I am using Bravo Worsted. 
It's a 100% acrylic yarn and it's a medium four worsted weight yarn. And I'll show you all the colors that I'm using as well. But I ordered this from uh, Wee Crochet's website and there's a whole bunch of different colors that I'm using and it's so soft. I love it. I love it. One thing I do want to note about your yarn choice is you want to make sure you pick a yarn that is readily available to you, whether that is online from a site like Knit Picks or We Crochet or from like a big box craft store like Michael's or Joann's or Walmart, you know, wherever you like to get your yarn, make sure you pick one that you know you can easily get when you run out. Because the reality of it is you're not going to know how much of each color you're going to need because this is virtually impossible to know. So I do suggest that you start out with at least one to two skeins of each of your colors off the bat. So just plan to get at least one of each of your colors, you know, maybe two if you feel like you're going to be kind of hugging in a certain temperature range for a while. But unfortunately, I can't give you exact yarn amounts because everybody is just going to be different. Just make sure you pick yarn that you know you can get. You are inevitably going to run out and you just want to make sure that you can get it. I prefer to get my yarn as I go. Um, I know the concern is getting differing dye lots of the same color and having the color Colors look a little bit off but honestly if you're getting a mass-produced yarn like a Red Heart Super Saver or Big Twist or We Crochet Brava the difference is going to be negligible and with all the stripes your you know your chances of having a whole bunch of colors and a huge stripe I don't know you know we'll see as the blanket goes on but it's gonna be striped you're not you're honestly not going to notice it now if you were doing something like a sweater you know maybe I would worry about dye lots a little bit more but in a blanket I'll have all the colors that I'm using for my current 2022 year temperature blanket listed in my blog post as well as the printout. So that way you can get all the same ones that I'm using. For my current year temperature blanket, I'm not doing a contrast color, but you are welcome to pick your own contrast color and add in your special dates. And if you decide to not use the colors that I'm using, that is totally fine. You can totally make, make it your own, pick out your own colors. And if you do, you'll just wanna make sure that you assign a color Color to each temperature range and then pick your main color that you want to use as your month separator and for your border. And if you're using a contrasting color to mark special dates, you'll want to pick that as well. In addition to yarn, you'll need some other materials and that of course is a crochet hook. I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook and then you'll also need scissors and a yarn needle and some additional materials you might want are a pen, a highlighter, a hole punch, possibly a binder if you wanted to make a binder like mine, or a notebook. Next is to figure out when you're actually gonna crochet. So you could do this daily, weekly, monthly, or you know, whenever the spirit compels you to, whatever, whatever works for you. But I think it's kind of good to have that in your mind kind of when you want to plan to sit down and crochet so that that way you kind of already already know what your plan is and then it might make it a little bit easier to actually stick to it and crochet it throughout the whole year. And that is totally up to you. There's no right or wrong answer here. For me, I find that I like to do it about once a week. So on Sundays, typically I will go to weatherunderground.com and I'll search out all of the temperatures for that past week. I'll write them down in my on my daily temperature tracker and then as I crochet each row I just highlight it off to help keep my place so I know exactly where I leave off and I know where to pick up when I go to sit down next. Before we get ourselves a little bit more organized I do also want to mention that of course I have the pattern listed in my blog post as well as in the printable pdf collection that I made. You'll find the complete pattern in both of those places and then to help out with this project last week I made a moss stitch tutorial so whether you have never done the moss stitch before or you just need a little bit of brushing up this tutorial will completely help you out I go over not only how to do the moss stitch but also how to change colors in stripes how to add you know just like the little contrasting color in the middle of the row and how to weave in your ends as you go. Because I don't know about you, but I do not want to have a blanket that looks like this after 365 days and have to weave in all of these ends. Not gonna happen, not gonna happen. So I am weaving in my ends as I go. You can of course 
you do you if you don't like the method that I show you can definitely leave in your ends later <laughs> but that's not going to be me so anyway the download and the blog post is basically just going over everything that we're talking about today but just kind of in written format and this will be a great resource for you to check back on and you can use this year after year to help you you know organize yourself with your temperature blanket um one nice thing though about using a binder and also with a notebook is you can do multiple multiple blankets and have it housed in one place so for mine I am keeping myself organized with tabs so um, I actually I have mine my current one taken out right now but I have my current blanket is will be here and then my blank my other blanket that I'm working on is behind this tab and so I have my key and then my daily temperature tracker right here and then I of course have the pattern written out for you so this is just this is just nice to keep you keep you organized and then when I'm ready to sit down and crochet I actually whip out my little clipboard where I put my daily temperature tracker and my little yarn and temperature key and I, it's just it makes it easier so um I just set this on my coffee table or you know just on the couch right next to me and what I'll do first is I'll go and I'll write down all of the temperatures for the past week and then I grab my highlighter and then I sit down and crochet and then as I crochet I just highlight each day off so then now I know that the last day that I completed was uh, January 19th so then I know the next time I go sit down um, the next date I have to crochet is the 20th and then I just go from there so this just keeps me organized I'll either just keep this on the clipboard and I'll just throw it into my bag or when I'm done I'll typically just put this back into its page, page protector into my binder and then I'll stick I hold I hole punched my little key card as well and so I just put that back in there just so it doesn't get all yucked up or anything but um but then of course if you want to go the notebook route you could totally do that you don't need to use a binder um and you know if you're techie maybe you want to use excel or you know your notes app on your phone you can totally just do whatever works for you but a notebook um I find works really well so what I did I got this notebook just like from Walmart you can pick up one for the dollar store whatever and I basically kind of write out all of the same information I put my temperature blanket I wrote out the year and then the hook size I once again wrote the wrong year but you know you'll have that um and then the hook size which is five and a half millimeter and then you know wrote out my temperature ranges the yarn colors and then I hole punched this in a attached attached my yarn and then I actually because it's a notebook and the paper is a little bit flimsy I reinforced this side of my page with tape and then I hole punched it just to make it a little bit more a little bit stronger so I made my first page my temperature key and then on the next page is where I am starting my temperature tracker so each page will be a month and so all you have to do is I just wrote the month and then I listed out all the days of the month and I started writing down the temperatures of the day. And then of course, if you have a special day that you want to remember, you know, just put a star by it, say it's, you know, Jane's birthday and you know, go from there. And so then you know, okay, well on January 23rd, I have that start and it says it's Jane's birthday. Maybe I'll embellish that with, you know, a few stitches of a contrasting color on that line. So that is basically the tour of my temperature blanket. I invite you to crochet along with me and all you have to do to take part is to just snap a picture of your progress, share it on Instagram and use the hashtag JBC 2022 temperature blanket. And I'll of course be sharing my progress throughout the year and that way we can just cheer each other on and encourage each other to continue to work on our temperature blanket throughout the year and if you're still here watching this video thank you I appreciate you so much and as a thank you I want to do a giveaway I want to do a giveaway of this printout and here's how you enter head on over to my Instagram page I'm at just be crafty blog make sure you're following along and then find my latest post which will be about my temperature blanket and comment with your favorite color the first 10 people to comment on that temperature blanket post with their favorite color will get this 
printable PDF emailed to them for free. And that's all for today. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. I really hope you do make a temperature blanket with me. And that's all for now. Have a great day. Bye.